coming to you from my makeshift studio in my new house in North Carolina. This is an Ingersoll Sergeant and Greenleaf lock. Um, the lock itself has a an Ingersoll um, well, lock core in it. It's a padlock. Um, that was made by Sergeant and Greenleaf in the United States, so sort of a British-American collaboration. And I had it out because I had this locked on one of my storage pods that I was using when I was moving cross-country. And I figured if I'm, as a lock guy, if I'm going to put locks on my pod, I might as well have the best. And um, I have some bigger locks and some batter locks, but the uh, the little holes on the um, locking bolt on the pod would only accept this, uh, I guess it's like a 3 8 um, shackle. It would not accept a uh, half inch shackle, so my big S&G Medeco powered locks would not fit there. Ironically, the this lock is probably a hundred times stronger than the door of the pod itself. Um, one thing I'll point out, this did not have rust on it when I got it, um, probably six months ago off of eBay, possibly from one of you, I don't know. Um, but it did develop a little bit of rust, despite not being in a whole lot of weather, I think, because the pods are shipped supposedly in closed trucks, but where the chrome plating or had chipped off, it did rust there, and a um, tiny bit of rust residue, probably also from the shackle in the, uh, the body. But overall, um, I mean, this thing is probably made out of stainless steel, so uh, I don't think anything, any structural problems are going to happen there. Zooming back out, there we are. Now, um, this look is actually patented by Ingersoll. As I said, made by S and G. The key, which is here, indicates that it is a government issue lock. Well, my camera skills have not improved. Here we go. Government issued lock. So you can see it says USA do not duplicate on this side. And if we flip it over, you can see this letter R here. I looked up this key on Ingersoll's website to see if I could get copies, and sure enough, the R series, you cannot get copies. It's restricted, even today. Now, um, I have the lock partially disassembled. When I got the, the pod back, um, the, uh, the thing was locked on there, and this plate was sort of like that hanging off. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see pretty well at an angle. And I was like, oh dear, what have they done to my beautiful lock? Well, turns out what had happened is that these two little um, screws, which frighteningly are all, all that hold this bottom plate onto the lock, um, had worked their way loose. Um, probably due to the fact that I had earlier disassembled it to take a look at the locking mechanism and I don't think I had quite the right wrench to tighten these properly. So it's probably my fault. These appear to be hardened steel. I don't think they really pose a security risk, although you know, if I were designing it I might have made these a little longer, but whatever. Um, the lock itself is made from laminations of, I believe, stainless steel. See, I mean, it's just finished down. You can see tiny little there we go. Tiny little divots in one or couple, one or two places. I guess those are the rivets holding these together, but it wouldn't surprise me if these are also welded or glued or something, but that's not coming apart. Now, I think the coolest part of this lock is this right here. This is the lock core. Now, to give you an idea of how big this thing is, so that's like about an inch and a quarter across. Right, 
pretty big. Ingersoll still makes these locks. Actually, they make this, they make a lock that looks very similar to this. This lock, locking mechanism itself, which is pretty unique to these guys, though the Japanese company, um, if I can get this open, there we go, uh, Miwa kind of copied it, one of their models. So this is the lock core. As you can see, it's massive. Massive thing. We like to talk about actuators. There's an actuator. That's uh, almost certainly hardened steel. Um, so there it would be in the locked position. That would be the unlocked position. The ball bearings here. There's a gasket. Keep water out. Ball bearings are down inside there with grease on them, as you can see. I'm already getting my table dirty. But that's not the cool part. The cool part is this. Let me zoom in so we can see this better. So, the way this works is this is a sidebar. And when the key is fully inserted, the sidebar can fit down into this groove here pretty hefty sidebar overall I'd say. It's a piece of what looks like machined brass uh, protected by this hardened steel front plate here. So actually <laughs> this little plate here doesn't matter because you'd have to get through probably an eighth of an inch of pretty hard steel there to get at it. Okay, This is held in by a roll pin. It looks like the whole the lock itself. Now inside here what runs the, let's see if I can zoom in, there we go, so you can get a good look. When I move the key, see the gates, how they're all aligned right now, so that can go in. Okay, so as I remove the key, you can see those gates moving around, and you might say to yourself, ah, it's a wafer tumbler lock. Well. Sorry guys, it's not. This is actually technically a lever lock. Okay, here are the levers. And as the key, let's see if I can get this right. As the key goes in, you can see there I'm pressing on this lever. It presses up, so this top bidding would press up on the edge of, say, this lever here. How well is that showing up? It's okay. Okay. There's that lever. If I turn the pick around and press on the other side, there's five more levers on the bottom, so a total of ten. So you can see I'm running, I'm actually pressing on several of them, but I'm pressing on these guys here. So the key goes in. There are little things, that, little bits of these levers that protrude into the keyway. They interact with the bidding. And then on the other side of the levers, let's see if I can push one by hand. Maybe not. Let's stick the pick back in. On the other side of the levers are the gates. Still not happy. There we go. These little gates. And so, let's see if I can. There we go. So, this one right here, you can see the gate is pretty close to aligned with center. And so as the, um, as the key moves around in there, it brings all these gates into alignment. So there's 10 total levers, five on one side, five on the other. These are notoriously difficult to pick. Um, I've seen one or two people, maybe three, pick these on YouTube. Um, and, uh, after quite a lot of trouble. I've played with it a bit and decided that it's, I'll probably have to wait till a little later in my career. Um, very, very fiddly to pick, but not a lot of room to work in there, despite how big it looks with the warding and everything and how close these are together, it's very easy to manipulate the wrong ones. But I just thought this was one of the most beautiful um, locking mechanisms I'd ever seen. Um, 
took me a while to figure out how to get it out when I first got the lock, but of course it's the first thing I did was take it apart. Um, but just a very nicely made lock. Um, just to complete the story, that sidebar interacts, um, well that sidebar grabs onto these notches here that are milled, they appear to actually be milled into this final constructed um, stack. And then way down in here there's two little ball bearings, which you can't see. Anyhow, very cool lock. There's a close-up of the logo. Let's see, Ingersoll. Some of them say, like the faceplate says patent number on it. If you look that up, you can see that's actually a patent on the lock body, not on the locking mechanism itself. Okay. So the U.S. government or or Ingr or um, SNG actually uh, licensed the design for this lock body. Which I've also seen, I think, marketed as a miracle lock, but I don't know if that's accurate. Licensed that from Ingersoll and obviously this core. You can buy locks for your house. You can buy door locks with this mechanism and they're actually pretty affordable for what it is. Um, which is a pretty security, pretty high security lock. I doubt you could bump this. It occurred to me after I filmed the video that you might like to see it actually working, fully assembled. So here it is locked up. A little bit of play in the shackle, but I can assure you um, with those ball bearings and the other tolerances in there, you're not going to care about that jiggling. So the key goes in here, it rotates one half, a little over one half turn, it's actually about a third of a turn, and the shackle comes out, and it actually comes all the way out. And interestingly, you can put the shackle back in either way you like, and lock it up. It seems like a trivial feature, but when I was putting it on the pod, because of the incredibly tight space here to get the bolt in, and it would just barely fit, right? Um, it's actually really nice that the shackle comes out all the way because you can put it on your lock or on your whatever you're locking and then slide the shackle in there and my, my finger is actually a little big for that. Lock it up and there you go. Not going anywhere. You can imagine if that's in a nice high security with a big, one of those big chains or um, high security hasp or something you're not getting in there without uh, breaking something else. This guy's not not going to be your point of failure. Not a picking video, but um, just, I think, a really cool lock and a little piece of history. I don't know exactly what time frame these were used in, but I'm going to suspect the 50s based on the patent numbers and things like that, 40s and 50s. Um, so, gorgeous lock, very secure, and I kept my personal belongings um, safe and out of the elements and away from would-be thieves um, all the way across the country. So thank you SNG and Ingersoll and thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Uh, please subscribe if you like my work and uh, as always thanks for watching and please keep it legal. Cheers and Merry Boxing Day.